In this video, I'm going to talk about Pride by White Lion. The album was released on June 21st, 1987 on Atlantic Records, and it is celebrating its 35th anniversary. This is an album that I listened to a lot when I was younger. Uh, one of the albums that got me into metal music. I think the albums that like, got me into metal music were like Def Leppard's Hysteria, Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, and then like this one. So in this video, we'll be sharing some of my personal memories with the album. I'll talk about the band, kind of like where they are now, and then I'll talk about the album, I'll talk about the songs, and um, you know, how it was important, like bringing hair metal to the mainstream back in the 80s. So this band, we have Mike Tramp. He's originally from Denmark, and besides White Lion, he's been in different bands, and he has released many solo albums, actually. He's released many over the past uh, 20 years, and he has re released a few like recently in the past few years. Few years, sorry. Vita Brada, he's a guitarist from Staten Island, and um, he was considered to be one of like the up-and-coming guitar shredders. Uh, his style was similar to like an Eddie Van Halen. You hear a lot of like similarities between his playing and Van Halen when you listen to like these albums. He unfortunately faded into obscurity after a wrist injury. It kind of made it di difficult for him to play the guitar when he needed to move his hand up and down the neck. Mike Tramp uh, wanted to, you know, to get him to rejoin White Lion in 2003, but it uh, never happened. Then there's James Lomenzo on bass. So he would play in heavier bands over the years, including Black Label Society, Slash the Snake Pit, and Megadeth. And he's actually the current bass player of Megadeth. He replaced uh, David Elfson after getting fired. And we have the drummer Greg D'Angelo. He was one of the original members of Anthrax and... He played on White Lion's uh, like three most popular albums, and he also played with Zach Wilde's band Pride and Glory. So, one thing I remember about this band is that back then there were a lot of bands with the name White in the title. So we had White Snake, Great White, and White Lion. And this was even before I knew about White Zombie, but that would come later. The band became popular with this album. It was released at a time when hard rock and hair metal were being played on the radio and getting heavy rotation on MTV. This was also, uh, the, I think it was like the first band I saw live. It was actually part of a, of like a triple bill with Tesla and Badlands. So, and that would be around 1989. So this band is very uh, important for me in my kind of like development as a metalhead. So the band White Line was kind of short-lived. They had five studio albums. You know, the first four being released between 1985 and 1991. But within that six-year period, they were very big and popular. They eventually reformed and released one more album in 2008 called Return of the Pride. That album had a completely different lineup. It had Mike Tramp, who was like actually the only original member on that album. And uh, let me talk about the songs. There are 10 songs, 44 minutes long. The album starts with Hungry. It's a straightforward hair metal rocker. The opening riff is fairly heavy. It has some Van Halen-esque guitar fills. The lyrics are typical to that of like with many hair metal bands with you know lots of like references to sex. Lonely Nights, this one starts with the classic uh, acoustic intro, followed by some heavy riffs. The song is about like a lonely girl on the corner of 42nd Street after suffering a heartbreak. Typical song about love and loneliness, and the song has kind of a classic rock feel, has lots of uh, guitar feels by Vito Brata. Don't Give Up, the song's an upbeat rocker. This is a song about people, you know, they feel like they've fallen into a rut in their life and uh, kind of just like going to work, making money. But like other songs, it's melodic. There are some great uh, riffs and uh, the vocals are very good. And it's a really good hard rocking song. It's very memorable. Sweet Little Lovin', this song has a short vocal intro followed by some cool uh, bass playing and it has some traditional hair metal riffs and this one's slower paced than the other songs very melodic the song is about a prostitute and the lyrics kind of seem shallow but keep in mind that they are a socially conscious band and some of the songs later on the album will address some socially conscious issues but it's a melodic rocker and a good song overall lady of the valley this song has a really cool and fast paced guitar intro it's kind of heavy for this type of band, along with the power chords and melodic lead guitar. It's kind of like a power ballad, as the first verse has the clean guitar playing arpeggios. The lyrics are very heartfelt and sad, about somebody who lost his brother in a war, and about a man crying out to the Lady of the Valley to bring him back. I don't know if the song has a deeper meaning, but you can put it in the comments if you know. It's a great song, the guitar solo shreds, has some elements of classic heavy metal, 
and uh, actually one of my favorites on the album. Then we have Wait, and that's the song that kind of got me into the band. It was a, a moderate hit. It's a semi-power ballad with a light verse and a harder chorus. Lots of cool guitar acrobatics on the song. It's just a very catchy song. The music video was played often on MTV. The lyrics are that of a typical 80s uh, hair metal love song. All You Need Is Rock and Roll. The song opens with some sounds of people kind of getting crazy in a bar. We have some acoustic blues in the intro. Fun song. The intro is cool. The lyrics are about like living the rock and roll lifestyle. There's some like Van Halen-esque uh, st style of guitar riffs in the song. And one of the harder rockers on the album. It's still a very melodic song with a catchy chorus. Tell Me, another popular song with a memorable vocal intro kind of builds to the technical guitar riffing and chugging guitars in the verse. It's a love song about teenagers being young and in love. It's a typical hair metal song and uh, it's really catchy. All Join Our Hands. So the next two songs in the album deal with some like darker subject matter or, or actually more like serious subject matter. So this is one heavier of songs and you can note that in the vocals of the first verse Mike Tramp kind of sings in like a darker and like a lower tone but the song is very catchy. The song is basically an anti-war song asks people of the world to join their hands in peace and uh, When the Children Cry that's the last song it's a power ballad. It was a moderate hit uh, lots of airplay on the radio and MTV. It's a serious power ballad about you know children facing a world filled with uh, fear and evil it's an anti-war song. The best part of the song is the guitar solo, which is very memorable. So in conclusion, one of the better albums from the late 80s hair metal period. The songs are very good. I'm actually surprised that, uh, you know, this band didn't really last as long as they did. They probably should have been like a band like as big as Guns N' Roses or Bon Jovi, but that's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So up next, Black Sabbath, Dehumanizer. Celebrating 30 years. Helmet, meantime, celebrating 30 years. That's all. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.